Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Four Words Podcast. My name is Aaron Dooms, Mike Nader Harris, and I am joined by three extremely attractive and sexy gentlemen. Hey! Uh, finally! <laughs> Holy cow! Thank you! Wow! Oh! Oh! No, fuck you guys! Look at you! <laughs> April Fools! <laughs> okay, I I gotta admit that was pretty good. I didn't expect that. So, all right. Fuck you! Thanks for joining, guys. As you all take a drink. Uh, <laughs> Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us uh, on Twitch and in podcast land. Um, so, let's hop <laughs> news right here. First, I am joined by Michael Azdrash. my life. What's up? Hope you know that. Got a haberdashing cess friend. You had my hopes up. You you broke my heart. Love you. And Stephen Frostbite Allen. Hello, internet. He's totally unfazed by it. <laughs> Played. Right, I break bitches' hearts all the time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and uh first off in the news uh as we've said before yes we are going to pax east and yes we can officially release some of the details now we're gonna have a booth uh we're gonna be doing some other stuff we're gonna be giving away some swag we're gonna um be doing trying to do a live podcast here um most likely with the just okay gamers guys uh we're gonna be doing a lot of stuff i'm gonna be trying to uh, video and Snapchat, um, all the shenanigans throughout the the weekend. So it's going to be a really good time. Um, just keep an eye on our Reddit, uh, reddit.com slash r slash T-Force Network. And um, we are going to have lots and lots of fun stuff coming. If you're going to PAX, come find us. Um, also, we have Patreon still. Uh we do still need your support, your help. And speaking of your support and help, thanks so much for coming to the charity stream. Uh, thanks to you guys, we raised twelve hundred and thirteen dollars. Uh, that pays for, wow, yeah, that nice. paid for a booth and then some. Um, so, thank you so much for that. It really helps us out. Um, and it was super fun. I unfortunately couldn't be there, but I've been watching the vods and it looked hilarious. Um, it looked like they really didn't want us to win that game with the rush ZZ rot. Oh yeah, they just they I mean yeah. You what guys what just, are you gonna do? The donators <laughs> I had to shit build on Grinsos it. too. Like oy. on who? Oriana. Oh Jesus! <laughs> it didn't go yeah. well. <laughs> <laughs> you hear again, Susan, you're like, all right, that's not bad. And then it's like, I on who? That. Or Donna. Oh, oh. I thought that. I was optimistic. Second item was uh, easy rots, though, and that just wasn't a good build. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, so check our YouTube out for the VODs. Um, it was really, really, it's hilarious. You'll see Mitch uh, getting iced and um, among many, many other things. Uh, Mitch getting his devourer stacked and then having to sell it <laughs> at full stacks. <laughs> Just lots of crazy uh, shit. So it was super fun. Uh, watch the VODs. And uh, from there, we're going to hop into our very serious trinket tip uh, this week, which is how to increase your words placed. And we're going to have Frost uh, kick that off for us. All right, guys. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. It goes a little something like this. Everyone doesn't care about whether you win games or you lose games. All people care about are your stats. And everyone's like, you know, I want to support my team. You know, I show I support my team. I, I place the most wards on the map. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to do that? Well, obviously what you're not going to do is like, you know, actually ward strategically and try and, you know, provide vision for your team. Let's way not be hard. ridiculous. Way too hard. That's, that's way too mm -hmm. hard. But what you can do is you can just, you know, buy a bunch of pink wards and then you can put them around your base before the game ends and then you could get that number up real high so oh, you man. can pat yourself on the back. That's a good idea. And that's my trinket tip. Beautiful. That's a really good idea. <laughs> I, gotta, I, ne I definitely need to integrate that into my game because I'm pretty sure the, um, the client takes into account how many wards you place when it determines your ranking. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. so I'm going yeah. to think that if, if I'm putting more wards down near the end, even if the game's just done, that'll help me get my ranking up. That'll help me get, like, those chests, and that that's always a bonus, you know, because it pushes me to get that S-, you know? 
It gives you right, more LP, right. I think. Yeah, I think that's so. why me does personally, really? I no, you're right. It does because it increases the stats of your overall, and that helps you. Uh huh. I don't think that's why me personally, I always make sure to uh, get all of the support items that include the um, the vision. Uh, was it? Um, that give you the totems also are the uh, the warding trink trinkets also make sure too that you get the jungle item that gives you the wards as well so then you can keep placing those down too. just stack ward items and you will always have vision everywhere you go yeah, yeah. You, know, you said you said support items and I think now would be a good time to talk about our item discussion um, I, this oh, one's absolutely. really close to my heart because you know they finally brought it back and you know I've mm -hmm. been maining a lot of Nasus. You guys know that. You guys have been seeing me play on my Smurf a lot. So I just like oh, really right. love like your Nasus right. play, man. Well, I you mean, just always loved him this so much. item is really good on him because it's just so. It's I mean, it's amazing for getting that gold up. So they brought back Heart of Gold, and let's talk about it real quick because it's pretty important. So what it does, it's a, it's a pretty good item. It gives you 200 health, and the unique passive it gives you uh, five gold every 10 seconds. So mm -hmm. it's not bad. I, uh, well, no, it's 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 better than not. Like this is yeah. uh, one of the biggest um, core items in game for top lane bruisers. Um, you know, you're running Jarvan, Aurelia, Udir, um, Nasus, any of those people in the top yeah. lane. Like this is like a must buy. And that Philo wait, Stone, wait, yeah. you, you snow. You, you can just completely snowball the game off of those items. So I want I want to be real quick on this. You know, there's a lot of ways you can get. We don't really talk about it all that much, but gold effectiveness out of out of these sorts of GP5 items. Now you have the choice of selling the item if you want to, or you know you could also hold on to it and collect that income over time. Well, Heart of Gold is one of those special items. It builds into good stuff. It builds into Locket of the Iron Solari or Randu and Zoman, So that's pretty good. But if you decide you don't want to go for one of those items, you can sell it. And it becomes cost effective mm -hmm. to sell at about 14 minutes. It's like three minutes and 45 seconds, some, something like that. So, you know, after that point, it is a cost effective item. And I mean, that's pretty good. That's really early in the game. Like, really right. good initial buy. And it, it builds into Lord Van Damme's Pillager. Oh, does it? Yeah, yeah it's true. It does. I didn't know that. Yeah. And also, it's... yeah, really great game. Really great item. Yeah, it's uh, it's honestly, I mean, you could just viably build Lord Van Damme's Pillager in every single role. Um, I will usually rush it over jungle items sometimes in the jungle. Uh, actually, mm -hmm. most of the time, about eighty percent of the time, and um, it just works great. I should try to um, this. Yeah, that would be no good. Nasus. It's well, OP. I usually I usually sell it because you know, like with Nasus, I'm trying to get those you know Q stacks up, and I don't usually go tanky. I usually just go full full like damage Nasus. Well, so yeah, um, I usually go crit nasty. I I mean I laugh because. <laughs> I mean, crit nasty is just disgusting. Cause like your Q can crit as well as deal bonus damage. So when you Q yeah. and crit with, it's disgusting. I I one shot a Viger the other day. It was nuts. I know it's like I can't believe they never patched it out of the game where your entire Q could crit. I didn't even. You know, like I thought like. It's I don't ridiculous. know why they would let Susan do that. It's dumb. It really is. And, you know, I, I hated on Nasus for a really long time. And then I started playing him, and I was like, God damn. He takes a lot of skill. Like, that Q is oh, yeah. tough to stack. I, I mean, like, really does. I, I consider myself really good at Nasus. So, like, 20 minutes into the game, I have, like, a, almost sometimes if, like, I'm on a really good day, I have, like, 100 stacks. And that's just, like, I'm farming the entire time. And I'm trying really hard. And at that point, like, I just fucking go off on people. Because I have, like, a whole fan and dancer along with my heart of gold. <laughs> feel a stone. And if I'm feeling, like, you know, really tenacious, I'll get Cage's lucky pick, too. Oh, man. Dude, God, oh God. God tier item. So so you brought up the, the, the quintessential, like, four GP5 build. Right. And, and, you know, gold per five. I don't mean gangplank. But I do. I also mean gangplank. You know, for those of you gangplank. gangplank well, survive. you also need GP5 um, quints. Don't forget that. Well, eh, I don't know about that. For no. Me too. That's, no. That's, always. Hmm. 
I don't know. But, ah, uh, yeah. I, I don't know. Like, 100, that's pretty good. That's really good. It is. It is. Mm. You should be proud you of You know, there's, <laughs> right. Um, I'm trying to remember. There was another item that I really loved. Oh, uh, Eliza's Miracle. You guys remember that item? Eliza's Miracle? Yeah. Right. That and Innervating Locket. Absolutely fantastic in the jungle. You can run that on like Nunu in the jungle. Oh Live my for days. God. I completely forgot. We probably didn't even tell right? our listeners this. So, okay. So, for those of you who aren't aware, League is like Riot decided to bring back a shit ton of old items. Absolutely. And so, the thing is, you have to type them in. Like, that's the kicker. Like, you have to type in, you know, Heart of Gold. You have to type in. Eliza's miracle. Obviously, if you don't know how yeah. to spell it, they wouldn't be it in the store. You Runic have to Vanguard. know. It. But they, I just realized right. our listeners probably didn't even know. Um, and, well, it's, it's, it's kind of ridiculous because, like, these are some really broken items, and they're not even telling people about it. I mean, that's just like an exploit, pay to win, you know. I mean, it's yeah. If, obviously, it's temporary. Knowing the names of the items um, that are OPOP is really going to improve your game just being able to type them into the shop yeah. get them mm -hmm. get that advantage above your enemies who don't know to type those names in and uh you know get those really good items that uh most people just completely overlook pro tip right. type in hat and that brings up death cap yeah um my favorite item they put back into the game is the blue pill and i don't know why they didn't add this back sooner yeah. i mean it only costs 600 gold and it allows you to teleport back to your base. Yeah. Why would you not get that? Well, and the best part is, too, is it like it also creates a bonus ability, so you don't have to save the slot. Like, you know, you don't have to save the item, right. so you can pop it immediately and then, like, walk to lane and then wait until you need to use it and be like, oh, shit, mm -hmm. I'm in a pickle, and immediately pop back to base. Like, you don't even have to save right. the item slot. It's it's really good. No, I agree with you. It's, I mean, it's like expensive, you can use... yes, obviously expensive, but it saves your ass so yeah, many times. How expensive is the B key? You don't even have to, you know, put that... I you don't. Have, there's no recall. No. That's that's all you have to do. Mm -hmm. You can use that for so many things. I can bind that to like, uh, joke or taunt, and I I cannot tell you how effective that is to put people on tilt. It's pretty funny because you're like adios while you're laughing at the same time. Right. Uh, but you know we have talked a lot about these items, and I want to talk about everybody's favorite skill shot here. Since we were talking about what the it. fucking segue was that? It's a segue. <laughs> It's it's a bad we segue. We did spend a lot was, of time. We spent a lot of time on it. I'm just moving on, man. I'm just moving. On. <laughs> Crit oh nasty for it's that degree of discussion. Well, we we, we talked <laughs> okay. about it for a second, but we didn't really get to talk about it. And since skill shots are our main topic, I felt like we should talk about everybody's favorite skill shot. Okay. Fair uh, enough. So uh, I right. start. I should start. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're bringing it up here. Okay, my favorite, <laughs> my favorite skill shot. No, somebody else start. Okay, so our main topic this week is on skill shots. And uh, first, we kind of want to just jump in and talk about all our favorite skill shots. My favorite skill shot, personally, is um, would be Scion's uh, Roar of the Slayer. It's his E. I really like it because you can max it and you can just deal silly amounts of damage with it by lining it up with the minion and just, you know, ping in your, uh, your, the enemy laner with a minion. Uh, it also allows you to clear the wave fast because you can, as they're walking a line, you can just shoot the first minion through almost the entire line of minions and it slows them and shreds all their armor. So it allows mm -hmm. you to do more damage to them temporarily. And, um, it it's also hilarious just being able to just throw you know minions and juggle monsters just by screaming at them um i love it and like i said like it's such a great harass tool in lane that um um it's it's just one of the funnest skill shots in the world to sit there and harass <laughs> they had to with. tone that down so i i still oh, love God, that it used on to be release. so broken Right, it's like you know what people are definitely gonna be maxing his Q. There's no way they'd max anything else. People are just like, <laughs> no. 
No, yeah. no, no. It's EP, poke. we're doing that. It's poke. I still, yeah. I still max, I still max E when I play him because I, yeah. I think the damage is still too strong. Plus the slow because he's so slow. Yeah. It allows all you gotta do is hit him once, and that allows you to get your whole combo on him. I mean, and, mm -hmm. and you're missing like the. I mean, you're not touching on the biggest thing about Scion is that he doesn't have that range and that E is what mm -hmm. helps him deal damage from... I mean, it's the only way that you can deal damage from a fire. Don't don't lie to me and say that you're going to be able to land your Q, because you're not. Like, you're having to land that E to actually Q trade gonna, with, uh, your, with your team. Come at you like opponent. a train here. Well, it's tough <laughs> right. to land your Q. Like, any good any good matchup, your opponent will know how to not get hit by your Q. So your mm -hmm. E is what you rely on to deal damage to your opponent. Mm -hmm. Haber, what's your favorite skill shot? Uh, yeah, it, it's still a toss up here. Like, I really, really like Varus's Q, just because of like I'm going to play into a poke comp or something like that. I I, I love Varus. I I love just sniping people for millions of damage with this Q. But I I have to say, Arcane. Mi sorry, Mystic Shot. I was about to say Ezreal Q. Arcane Shift yeah. is a pretty good spell, though, too. Let's be honest. Arcane Shift is, Reduce yeah. Reduce cooldown I, on attacks. Well, I, I, like... I, I wish they, like, got that fixed so it, like, better targeted, you know, champions. But, yeah, Mystic Shot is definitely... It's it's spammable. It it's like it's just target. It's supposed to. It always it's does. supposed to also prioritize champions, but it they never really got that. The, it prioritizes the closest target no matter what, as far it, as I'm aware. It doesn't it's, matter if it's okay. a minion or It's not a skill shot, so... I mean, Mystic Shot, I, I feel like it fits into that range where it's like the right amount of width, where it feels really good when you land it, and you can land it often enough, you know? Yeah. I like that you can hit it on the side. Like, you can mm -hmm. clip people. Right. You gotta be watching for those in lane. Yeah. It's not anything too flashy or no global ultimate or crap like that, but it's just fun. I like it. My ultimate's pretty damn flashy and I love it. And that is Nars ultimate. That's my favorite skill shot. Oh, yeah. 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 We actually it's did so kind of talk about this, and for those of you that want to argue that it's not a skill shot, we did come to the conclusion that it is a skill shot. We talked about it. We legitimately talked about it. It is a skill shot. Yeah. So you have to aim it, and it's a me we determine it's a melee skill shot, but how about you talk yeah, about the skill shot? Yeah. I think it's amazing because it's it's so fun to just displace people, and then if you hit someone against the wall, it's pretty much like guaranteed like full combo, and like there's pretty much, especially if you're doing this off of NARS, like typical engage, you know, switch from mini to mega and then slam someone. It's pretty much like the best feeling in the game. So I love that ability. Um, I, I just, it's really the best feeling in League of Legends for me is when you land that combo. <laughs> Completely agreed. Super good. That NARS so as for Ishin. Um, so we're going to talk about the best skill shot, right? I mean, it is... Uh, Nas is this Q. <laughs> it is the... I, I can... I, I, and I'm actually going to bring this up. I'm going to challenge anybody to argue this. I personally, and can refute anything, I think that Lux's E, Singularity, is the best skill, and the best skill shot specifically in League of Legends. Now, anybody can argue with me on that. I am so down. I'm... I'm not going to argue that I think that's your personal opinion. <laughs> yes. I, I can, but there's a lot of different reasons why I think it's the best skill shot. Because it does... Malphite's ult. It does everything. Like, it, it's that's, CCs. He brings up a good point. Malphite's ult... Malphite's ult. Is, huh. Does yeah. not go on cooldown nah. when you're using it. Malphite's ult. <laughs> also, I, a single one can win a game. I don't, well, like I don't think there's any one best skill shot it's though. The best Honestly, best like if you're story. if you're talking like objectively, mm, yeah, I disagree. They all serve their own purpose. I well, <laughs> sure, but I mean, there are definitely skill shots that are way better than others, and in that regard, there can always be the best. You just you have to take in all the factors don't, of the don't, current Don't drag situation. Essence Flux into this. Don't you dare <laughs> drag Essence Flux into this. I'm just saying. 
<laughs> it gives vision. It's AOE. It's slow. It goes on cooldown yeah. as soon as you throw it. You can pre and it sucks it. at clearing minion waves. Uh, it only sucks early. But even then, like if it did more damage to like monsters, that would just make it really broken. Like it's still actually pretty good at clearing waves because as soon as you get an item, I don't know this awesome thing called Luden's Echo, to where it almost always just instantly clears everything. Bye. So I think it's time to reel things in here and actually take control of this episode. So right. a lot of what we said recently has been very interesting, and you can be the judge of whether or not it was 100% factual. But let's factual. get into uh, <laughs> oh, some yeah. skill shot discussion. So to somebody who's new to League of Legends, or is just so we can set the table here, what do we consider to be a skill shot in League of Legends? A skill shot is any um, skill that is not does not rely on a target. So you can f you can use it regardless of if you have someone to hit it with in that area or not. Right, and like that's why we include stuff like um, Nara's ultimate or um, Azir's ultimate. Because, like, even though they are, like, not projectile-based, they still can be cast at any time at any random direction that you so choose. Even, even like, a Mumu's ult is technically a skill shot because you can cast it with no one around you, technically. And that's actually the but one area I wasn't sure if I was willing to in go. a fixed See, direction. I, don't, I is, wouldn't consider it a skill shot. It is in a fixed, fixed direction, but it depends uh, It depends on where you're located of its effectiveness. The, the, the difference is instead of, instead of aiming where the skill shot's going, you're making sure that you're yeah. in a position to do, do it. But Doom, if you are in the range and you press the R button, you cannot miss well, unless they go like, untargetable. I mean, Doom is not wrong. He's not wrong, but I think it's a different this category is, of skill Yeah, shot. this is like, yeah. like it's, it's sort a, of it's a gray a area of different. skill shot. It is a, a it different is thing. Very gray we didn't area. think you were going to throw that curveball in there. Yeah. Well, Always got to. I mean, but that's the awesome thing about League of Legends, though, is that there's going to be exceptions to a lot of these things that we consider to be fundamental. Oh, I... So, yeah. in that regard, I'm glad that you brought it up because it does raise an interesting point about the, the skill as a, you know, as a skill. That being said, I don't necessarily consider it a skill shot in the same regard. However, it does take skill to use, so don't necessarily, yeah. you know, disregard all the things that we talk about in this episode, and don't think that you can't also apply it to skills that are like that. However, they're not they're not the same. You can't miss when they're next to you. So it is not sure. totally the same. So it's similar it's, but it's, not the same. The main idea being, you know, a skill shot is something you have to aim. You know, we there's a lot of edge cases where you kind of figure out, okay, what is this? Like does it really count? And th that one's a good example, but unlike mm -hmm. targeted abilities where like for instance, you're Every champion's basic attack is a targeted ability. Um, you just select them, and then as long as you're in range, like you will attack them, and it, it won't miss. Um, yeah, skill well, shots are, don't work that way. Listed, but... <laughs> I mean, okay. the great thing about like skill shots is that they don't require vision. They're not reliant on vision. It's just your own intuition and whatever you feel is the right way to use it. That's actually the big one because, and that's actually I would consider to be the most important aspect of the skill shot is that it can hit units that can't necessarily be seen, and and that right there is into like is very important, but you don't have to target, which is the quintessential mm -hmm. aspect of it. Like a lot of people consider, you know, targeting to be very beneficial, but my personal opinion, and a lot of people will argue this, but. My personal opinion is I feel skill shots are the better ability, if only because it can hit things without targeting. Right. I mean, like, let's talk, for example, Rise. Back when they did his rework, they changed his Q from going to being on target to being a skill shot. Completely and changed up, him. Yeah, and it brought up a lot of good points about it. It was harder to harass and lane, but you gain the um, benefit of being able to use it whenever you want which allowed you to also stack your tier up faster and not be reliant 
as much on um, vision for hitting your target. Habert, that's, well, that, that's well, okay, wait, 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 real quick. I want to touch on something very specific Haber said. He said that you can use it whenever you want. Why is that so important? I mean, like, um, it allows you to stack your tier and faster. Just, it well, allows you to in a general sense. Shit. Exactly. That's, yeah. The key to... thing that you said, as Asdorishan, was that you don't require a specific target. Like, that's what makes skill shots so magical, because in in this way is that a, a target ability is useful and reliable, a skill shot at the expense of some of that has can be used wherever, whenever you're you're in control, and that offers a lot of freedom. A lot of freedom to, and like freedom that right. you may not even initially think about. Like the ability to check a bush just because you know the sound that makes when a cue lands on somebody. Like you don't need to see it hit. All you need is that audio cue, and you know that there's somebody in that bush. You don't necessarily mm -hmm. need vision if you have the intelligence to understand what you're looking at and what you're hearing. And, and like that is the the most I feel the most important part about a skill shot is is that allows you so much freedom so much freedom to do and learn so much about what's around you and what's going I right. do that a lot on the skill shot that you named as your favorite skill shot Lucian's singularity is like amazing at just like checking bushes and avoiding face checks I, I mean I can but I mean it also allows you to do so much so much more things you know yeah. like that's the thing in general I think skill shots, overall are probably the better just because it allows uh, you to open up so many, uh, so many more different paths of gameplay. Like, yeah, we'll keep they, going with like loosen the singularity there. Not only can you use it to damage uh, opponents, but you can also use it to zone off entire areas. So you have that threat of damage. So you can then pressure them to going into a spot that you want. You can check revision and all this other stuff. It allows you to go outside the normal constraints of the game as far as point and click and putting it into your mo your own intuition as, as far as like where you think uh, that needs to go, what's the best thing to do at that certain moment in the game. No, yeah. Rambling. Mm. And I, I do want to scale that back a bit, though, because it seems like so many people are, are hyping up skill shots. There are a lot of advantages to having targeted abilities in the game as well. And they True. they play a very important role in the game. I mean, I'm speaking as somebody whose main has a, a targeted stun uh, on, a, on a W, which is amazing, gold card. Um, and what targeted abilities have is, I mean, first of all, they're typically a lot more reliable. Uh, in yep. most cases, you know, if you're in range and you throw it out, like mm -hmm. unless they have some way to get untargetable or spell shield or some crazy shenanigans, they're gonna get hit, mm -hmm. yeah. um, which is super good. Also because I and I know there's a lot of players out there who get really mad at things like, oh, why is like Annie Q not a skill shot and like why is all this and it's like how can like she didn't even have to aim that stuff, but like it's really important that there's skills in this game that can reliably shut down mobility champions. Yeah, right. And, and like that's one of the areas where oftentimes it's it can struggle if you're like a heavy skill shot based champion, whereas a, a targeted ability could be a game changer. Yeah, I'm really glad you brought that up because that is like yeah. the counter to skill shots. I mean, while you're while we're on the subject of you know why um, why targeted abilities are so strong is because they can they hinder mobility. Well, that's the the contrary is that skill shots can't do that when you're against a Cassidin. It's very easy to, you know, dodge a lot of your skill shots because he has that mobility. Ari is the same thing. Like, with that area comes the ability to dodge. And when you're up against somebody with skill, you know, it, it becomes more of a problem. So. Oh, absolutely. There, I mean, there, there's so much less counterplay to point and click skills. Um, but at the same time, like, they're the balanced. Point. Yeah, they're balanced enough to where, um, you know, they're on high enough of a cooldown or have high enough of a mana cost or are low enough in damage or whatever to where... Or, or well, low in range sometimes. Or range, yeah. Right. yeah. Or because that, that was like part of... Like, what if that yeah, is that, your only thing that you have? Right. Like, for a lot of people, Right, that but uh, that's, that's what I'm saying is that they're well-balanced. So don't think that, like, a skill shot... 
you know, a, any champ with all targeted abilities is always better than skill shot champions. That's just not right. true. Um, it's that you have that that nice, um, you know, parallel between them. Like I'll like Maokai. I like Maokai a lot, and he has one really strong skill shot, which is his sapling toss, because not only does can it provide vision and do damage on hit plus damage after and zone opponents and do all this cool stuff and slow and stuff. But then he has a really nice, um, his root, his, um, Mm -hmm. twisted advance is great because it's a point and click, you know, travel to them and root them. And, you know, I don't, I don't know how many times I've been playing him and it's like, Oh, look a Callista. Oh yeah. You can't hop away from this. So Mm -hmm. like, you know, having that mix is nice, and depending on the champion, I think that Riot does a really good job of balancing in skill shot champions, stuff like that. I will say a lot of skill shot heavy champions tend to be harder to play, usually overall, um, or ones that rely on very important high cooldown skill shots, but right. um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think we should we should start talking about the different types of skill shots. So if you remember at the start of this conversation, we got into all these different examples of like, is that a skill shot? Is that really a skill shot? And the thing is, there's just so many different types of skill shots yeah. that like we you really kind of have to think of like not all of them function the same way. Um, so this episode, we're going to be talking about, you know, what are skill shots and how to land them? I think the first thing you need to understand is not all skill shots are alike and there's a whole bunch of different types of skill shots so to name an example aoe and, and single target what's an example of like a an aoe uh skill shot that somebody might luck have singularity. Luck singularity. singularity there you go the best skill yeah. in the game yeah zig's alt zig's oh, don't everything roll your eyes. best skill in the game right. <laughs> I will roll my eyes at that. Best so, skill in the game. When you think of that, like Lux can hit so many different people um, with one ability. Like anyone who's in Lucian Singularity can be hit. Whereas you know somebody who's throwing out uh, a Nidalee blitz spear, or, yeah, or an, or a Nidalee spear, like you're only going to hit one person. Yeah. Um, and that builds on probably one of the most common mechanics in League of Legends for really high risk, high reward skill shots. Um, is skill shots that stop on the first target. Um, what are some examples of these? Morgana Stark biting, probably. Blitz pull. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Blitz uh, Nautilus Blitz hook is like the quintessential. Like even uh, Dota has like the same stuff. Like there's yeah. like that one thing where if you hit someone, it's crazy powerful. But if you right. you know don't hit it, then it's rough. Yeah. yeah, not not every skill shot that single target fits into that, but most of the ones that are definitely are only apply to one person or the first thing hit. Yeah, most most single target like stop on first hit skill shots either provide like a nice significant uh, um, form of crowd control or do significant damage. If if you want to learn how to get good at skill shots, these are your skill shots to practice. These are the guys to, to use because oh yeah while while, yeah. while we said high risk high reward I think it's not high risk high reward I think it's medium risk medium reward I think that it's like balanced it's 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 quite balanced <laughs> yes you put yourself in an opportunity to get countered but at the same time like it deals a good amount of damage. Well, I- there are certain champions where this is their whole bread and butter. They so, have this up, it, 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 and so if yeah. they have it down. So we categorize the entire stop on first target. No, and... I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm no, not saying that. Yeah. Sometimes it also plays into you know the way the spell functions. Like if it's like a very fast spell, like an Ezreal Q. If you didn't have to stop on the first target hit, it'd be insanely hard to dodge. Totally agree. I mean, um, it's, it's W. That's that's a man that's his W. Now. But I mean, the whole point <laughs> yeah. is is that like his Q has decent range and it's on a short enough cooldown where it's really not that bad when he pulls it. It's not high risk high reward at all. Low cooldown, low Maybe mana cost, cooldown and and it deals decent damage from good range. Like that to me doesn't say high risk high reward. The point is is that no, it's just right. a quintessential. It's it's very important to land and that's why it's a, like why it's mostly considered to be high reward high risk. It's it's you need to land it because you're just being wasteful. Right. Yeah. 
so in addition to stopping on the first target hit, there's also s- certain skill shots that stop on the first champion hit and don't give a damn about minions or jungle monsters. Um, I remember when I first like started playing League, you know, I saw Ash was in the tutorial, and I loaded up a game as Ash. And I was like, oh, I can't wait to try out her ultimate, and I just fired it on a minion wave. I was like, that did no damage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, some you know some are champion reliant and some are minion uh, reliant. You know some can be blocked by minions and monsters and some can't be. So um, that's you know, why very... it's really just important to actually read the whole description of the ability because oh, it, yeah. it will say in the description. You know, uh, Ash fires a large arrow and it explodes on the first champion hit or whatever like that. It'll say right in there what that does. If it specifically mm. states champions or not. Or to like, sometimes in the client, you can like bring up the champion if you're new to the game, and then like you can see what the abilities, like in their little preview window, what they look like. And so you you can see like it flies over the minions, and then it hits the first champion. Like, just make sure you understand how it works because you don't want to be like me and then try and farm minion waves with ash arrows. Isn't the new character have an ability? That's a skill shot oh, yeah. that stops on champion Aurelian hit. Aurelian soul? Yeah. Does it, is it, is it Aurelian soul, speed? yeah. Can't, his Q... It stop what? on champion hit, or you can just stop it. I'm pretty sure... Yeah, his Q, Q oh. stops... It's... His Q stops on champion hit, but it won't stop on minion or monster hit, but you yeah. can reactivate it, yeah. too. I don't think it, it stops it, it on doesn't, champion hit. It doesn't stop, no. I don't like think a, you it, detonate it. Yeah, it's it's just like a Nivea's Q. Hmm. It, oh, doesn't, okay. it doesn't. It doesn't detonate until you tell it to, or until I, the I thought it stopped green. as soon as it hit a champion. But the champion oh, before yeah. that, Jin, it he right, does he have does. one of these. Yes, yes. His W. Yeah, you're right. Or his ultimate. Mm-hmm. So since we have Haber on the show, I I know he has an example of a great piercing uh, skill shot yes, that just goes through everything. Light. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, I told you. Well, I, like I guess Tarek. it is, right? I was. It is. Yes. Well, but the, I, I, can I, hit I multiple targets. I guess that's not really right. piercing. <laughs> that that's that's piercing. Okay. And it still it still runs on the same mechanic as Ezreal's um all piercing too. arrow, piercing arrow too. What is it? Piercing light. That's that, another thing, isn't that it? Forest? Piercing light is forest. Piercing. Yeah, who's piercing arrow? Piercing arrows. Or I'm sorry, piercing light is Lucian. Piercing arrow. Piercing yeah, arrows, Ferris. Right. Correct. Okay, yeah. Piercing arrow, that's what I meant. But gosh, there's so many abilities. Uh, but a lot of these piercing sort of um, projectiles, like um, Ezreal's ult, um, let's see, Varus's Q, Caitlyn's Piltover Peacemaker, they all will keep traveling through a target in a specified direction that you set with your skill shot. With uh, the condition that after the first champion hit, it usually reduces the damage taken to all um, uh, other targets that it hits after it. it usually the case by like 10% or something. It's it's not the case for hit. all of them, I don't think, right. but for a lot not of all. them, yeah. Uh, not like and... Draven. Actually, I don't know if it does on Draven's axes. I think Lux's ultimate so that should be put up. into this category. We have it in the one below, yeah. but I think that is this category. Well, it, it, it fits into both. Well, I said it's like a it's non projectile. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, oh. then you get it. Well, let's kind of move on to the next where it's like you have projectiles and non projectiles. So projectiles are like it. it's an actual entity that once it hits something, it's going to do damage. Like it has its hitbox, and when it collides with your hitbox, it's going to do its thing. Then you have like non-projectile skill shots like Lux's ultimate to where um, it's not really a thing that's flying out. It's just, it just kind of is it's a beam. like, yeah, it's, it's, a, a, it's, it's a laser a that just it's activates an actual all laser, one. which I'm yeah. going to butt in here and say that, by the way, Victor, his, his laser is not an actual laser. It's a ray. So Lux has the best lasers because hers are actually <laughs> lasers. <laughs> They're legitimate a lasers. Is? A ray is is heat okay. and a laser is light. They're not the same thing. So uh, and we need to be aware of this because Lux has the best lasers and this is <clears throat> this is cannot be debated. 
Okay. But on, the, on this All topic, right. I wanted to bring up. Um, so Jinx Zap, it's kind of, and, and Lux Ultimate are both like long rectangles that go a long distance, but mm-hmm. one of them is a projectile because you know the actual zap that flows through uh jinx's thing and one of the reasons why that's important is because if you think of champions like yasuo or brahm um like especially yasuo if he throws up a wind wall that's gonna block a jinx w but a uh, luxel is just gonna just fucking go right through it yeah right through. because it's it's not an actual thing traveling through it just kind of right is you know, and um, like then you Jinx then, alt, that's still actually a projectile. Yeah, it is. It is a projectile. Yeah. I remember has, that. So even yeah. though it flies off screen, it is a projectile because actually, it yeah, is in its use, taking like, off or okay, in its landing, it can be stopped by like wind walls and stuff. Um, and then the other thing would be like melee and what we would call melee or positional skill shots. And they'd be like, yeah, Nars ult, uh, Thresh's flay. What about Scion's ult? Uh, Scion's ult would technically kind of be a melee, uh, not a melee, but a positional. That ult. one's interesting. I never. It's, it's very I, interesting. I, I was basically turned like into, like, into a sort of thing. I, I'm like, what is it with a train? Yeah, he it's turned technically himself a skill into the own project, his own projectile. He's a fucking train. Yeah. So, I mean, there's different types of skill shots, and, you know, I think that kind of covers that. But just remember that basically anything that's not click and apply or, or you know, as we would say, an area of effect. So anything that's just going to happen around you, um, regardless of what's going on, would be a skill shot. So, um, so then we kind of get into kick combinations and timing them. Um you you obviously want to hit your skill shots it's very important that you hit skill shots so obviously targets that aren't moving are the easiest to hit sometimes making sure that they you're chaining your cc so that you're hitting one cc and then hitting another skill shot that's the best time to fire it is after they've already eaten some sort of crowd control um Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think Doom's right on on the money here because there's so many that we talked about skill shots, you know, having the reliability issue, and you have to actually aim them. It, if you have the luxury of somebody who can just stun, or you can stun somebody yourself before throwing out an important skill shot, like by all means, you know, go for the easier shot. A, a lot of times, like people will try and hit people from like super long range for no reason like you don't have to go for the long range shot if you don't have to in fact a lot of times you could end up missing a shot that would otherwise be really easy to make yeah yeah and then um i i guess from there we'll just kind of hop into our next whole talking point which is about predicting movement so obviously you're not always going to run into the ideal situation that your target is standing still um so it's all about hitting the skill shot and to hit your skill shot you can't necessarily always be aiming at where they're at but aiming at where they're going either watching where they're actually going or predicting their movements of how they were are going to dodge it when they see you fire it um Mm -hmm. are huge you know uh and this is this kind of harkens back to other topics we've covered a lot on trading on csing and stuff like that because um it's not just predicting enemy minion or i'm sorry enemy champion movements but it's also uh, uh predicting enemy minion movements too so that you can cs with certain skill shots uh things like that it's it's very it's very and a lot of times your skill shots are very easily telegraphed. So there are times when uh, people are vulnerable to getting hit by your skill shots. Obviously, we said them being already CC'd is a big one. Uh, But also if they're like going for CS. So if they're trying to walk up Mm -hmm. and hit a minion, uh, they have to stand still to real quick to do that auto attack uh, animation. And that's a really good time to throw out a skill shot because um, that's going to allow you to get that free little trade. Mm-hmm. 
do you, you really hit on a, a huge thing and i mean really the number one way to both like hit skill shots and also really dodge skill shots is to know what your opponent is going to do where they're going to be and like what spells they're going to use and you know think ahead of time so if somebody's the trading stance is the perfect example of this if somebody's going to go for a last hit like especially if it's a melee champion Mm-hmm. You know, you know they're either going to go for that minion, and then you have an opportunity to punish them with with by throwing a spell in that direction, or they don't go for it because like you've zoned them and you've you're in position to hit them, and then you've denied them CS. So that's obviously great. And then there's the other point which you just started talking about, and then I I wanted to make sure we didn't lose was yeah. Some, sometimes it's not only them getting up and auto attacking it. Sometimes like you can predict what they're going to use to CS. So, like, for instance, if mm-hmm. I'm a Lux laning against a Katarina, um, you know, in early levels, she might have put a point in her dagger. Um, I know funny. that she she's going to run up and throw a dagger to get that range CS so I can throw it where I think she'll be in dagger range and hit her with a skill shot. I, oh, yeah. That being said, and you touch on a very important aspect of, you know, abilities, and that's, you know, knowing abilities. I think a huge part of being good with skill shots is knowing the skill shot, knowing the projectile time, you know, travel time, knowing the mm-hmm. range, knowing, you know, distance, all of these different sorts of things. It's it's not so much as, you know, just knowing what the enemy will do, but knowing how long it's going to take your projectile to get to where the enemy is. And a lot of that goes into just, like, you need to practice this character. Like, you need to get familiar with the skill shot, how it feels, how it works. Like, each skill shot feels a little bit different than the next one. And, like, as you're using it, you're going to notice little, like, quirks and nuances of each little ability that you can right. either take advantage of or need to work around because that's just the way that it is. Like, I want to throw this out there. Like, um, you can tell apart the people who have played Thresh a good amount and the people who haven't. Because the people who haven't played Thresh a lot or don't really plan on learning him will sit in lane all day and will use their hook as soon as they have it off of cooldown from as far as they can away. Yep. Whereas, you know, the people who have played Thresh un- enough really know, okay, I can sit back and try to hit, you know, hook after hook and maybe hit one after a while, but I can have a lot higher success rate holding on to that going in and maybe flaying them first. And then, since I've already used that CC and I know that they're bound up, I know that I can then hit that uh, harder-to-land skill shot. And the same concept applies you know, to any single champion that has a skill shot. It's really learning that skill shots do come with an inherent versatility. So if you're just using it in one certain way, you're really wasting a lot of the potential that a skill shot does have. Yeah, and to, really, before we lose that point, because Haber hit on like the perfect point, which is that once you use your skill shot, if you miss it for whatever reason, especially something like a thresh hook, like your amount of lane presence and like your capabilities to be successful for like the next you know ten seconds or whatever, you have way less control over the lane. So. You really don't, for a lot of these high-risk skill shots, and, and really just in general, like, you want to make sure that you have a good chance of hitting them, and, like, that's what separates somebody who's, like, just playing a champion, or somebody who knows the champion and the champion they're playing against. I mean, it's part of understanding the skill, you know? It's like, mm-hmm. if, if, if somebody just blew Blitz Hook, somebody just blew... Leona Zenith Blade, somebody just blew Morgana Binding, somebody just blew... I can go on and on and on. And each ability... Time to engage. Each ability <laughs> has a little special, like, opportunity, like, nuance thing that you just, like, you have an opportunity to take, take advantage of them using it. Vice versa, <laughs> though, when you, when you have that, you threaten them. Because that means that you can use it. Like, and that is... That has value inherently as well. And that's another part of... That's another thing about skill shots, too, is, like... You currently and will like unless you use it, you always have that threat, and and taking advantage of that is huge. It's quintessential. It's part of mm-hmm. using yeah, skill and, shots effectively. And and you have to you have to too when you're lining up skill shots to to use it on an enemy in these cases where you do decide to actually throw it. Um, 
you have to consider a lot of things. You have to consider how you, the skill shot functions. You have to consider if a minion's going to block it or if someone else may block it. Um, if, you know, you're not intended target and what's going to happen if you do hit them with that, like like a blitz. If you hook an Amumu, uh, you're done. Yeah. Like, you pull an Amumu into your team, he's going to hold. I'm glad you talked yeah, about that. They're diving that is on that. Big. Just because you landed the hook doesn't mean you did anything good for your team. You just pulled the Malphite into the middle of the team. Good fucking job, Ray. buddy. Bye. <laughs> Ray, we're fucked. Yep. Hey, Guys, I finally hit one. Oh. Yeah. It's, oh, no! <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, it's about target selection as much as it is actually it. hitting it and threatening it but also it's to setting yourself up for the best time to do it um like elise uh, her cocoon obviously is her you know biggest skill shot her the thing that you really watch out for because that is a you know guaranteed stun if it hits you however it's pretty hard to hit skill shot um you know you walk into lane and you throw it immediately if you miss it it's like okay well you might as well just walk away from that game because you're really probably not going to do much after that um but if you walk in and you start slinging damage and they start trying to like oh crap either fight you or start trying to back off when they're trying to back off they're probably going to run in a straight line away from you that's when you throw it you know or you watch how they're how they're pathing and you you catch them you know between the wall and the minions hey look you have a straight shot now so always look at the angles too of how to throw those skill shots because there's there's so much you can do with it just you know it's like we're talking just the threat of having that skill shot Mm -hmm. because sometimes too you you'll have it and and you'll just be following and you'll put a little damage on them and then you're at a good position to where you could throw it and they'll just flash because they're like it's either i flash or i get you know hit with this so um you know a lot of times you can burn so summoners funny. just with the threat of a skill shot it's, too yeah i'm again glad you brought that up too because it's so fun to do that with somebody like lux because like and it's it's good because when you get to that point like players despite popular belief i don't think that players are necessarily always dumb like if 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 somebody sees a lux running at them they're gonna expect the snare especially if they're point blank like they know that that's gonna come right so i mean the flash is actually pretty smart because i'm gonna fucking land it and if i've proven time and time again that i'm going to land it you could just walk straight at them and there's nothing they have to flash they really do like, yeah. it's so yep. hilarious because they're like, ah, oh, yeah. shit, I'm out of position. I'm caught. I'm done. I have to flash. Like, I just, I have to flash. She will and, land it. She will land it. She's and if it you before. have flash and they don't, like, you just know that you can flash into point blank range and throw that skill shot. And, like, if that's the difference between life and death, like, that's how you get kills. Yep. Right. Oh, absolutely. And you have to think of it, too, when you're avoiding skill shots. Like if someone has a skill shot up and they're they're holding on to it, it, you know, sometimes you just have to burn that flash because if they line it up and you get hit, you're you're probably toast. So, you know, always watch out for that potential too. you know, as losing a summoner is always better than a death. So don't be afraid to use that flash if you have to, to avoid a skill shot. And also, please, if you're flashing away from a skill shot, don't flash in a straight line. Flash <laughs> away from it, flash diagonally. So. <laughs> Do you want to reel this in and, and talk about something that Doom mentioned a while back, but I think is really like the golden nugget of, of landing skill shots, which is that, you know... If you think of like a really good player at League of Legends, like you might see some montage reel where they hit like these crazy hard skill shots and like, you know, jump back to their shadows and then like do all these things and stuff. But like realistically, what a smart player does is he doesn't take like unnecessary risks. Like he sets mm-hmm. up his skill shots so that way like they are almost like surely going to land if he plays his r- it right and knows his champion. Yeah. So like the first example I'll name, and I, I talked about this before, if you're ganking a lane, you know, like let's say you're like a level three Amumu or something, and you get behind the person you're ganking, like don't go and like try and go for the max range, like crazy a um, bandage toss that's gonna like look like you sniped him with a bandage. Like just walk right up to him. Right. Like like that's all you need to do, and then like he's he's screwed. 
like so many yeah. players will like I'll see them sit in a bush on like a muumuu and they'll like try and go for like the snipe and then like they'll miss the bandage toss and they'll be like well I guess the gank didn't work and then they'll leave and I'm like dude you could have just walked right up to him <laughs> yeah it, you really had to play to the best of your ability when using these skill shots to have the biggest um, success. You know, you have to remember, like, if you're jungling, you have a certain amount of time. If you're laning, you have a certain amount of resource, mana, energy, whatever it may be. So you want to get the best bang uh, out of it. So whether it's, you know, looking for that opportunity when that lane opponent's going to be going for a CS and they're open or they're under turret and they decide to walk under the narrow side of the turret and there's literally no way they can now avoid your skill shot or they're traveling through the jungle and they just hit that one spot where literally they still can't avoid your skill shot when you press it. You're using it to the best of your abilities. I keep thinking right, of Lux I, Ultimate, like every single situation. I'm like, Luxel, I, Luxel, I, Luxel. I, I know you do, baby. I You <laughs> just mentioned, so like, I'll, I'll use Lux because she's a great example here, too. If you're in mid lane and you ward over the ledge, that little catwalk that leads to mid lane, That's and, so like, let's favorite. say you've got a pink ward in your bush or whatever if somebody walks by there like and they don't know you're in that bush and they walk on this tiny oh, narrow right. corridor right. it's like the easiest lux combo you've ever landed and it's the most fun thing in I, the world i think i've gotten like ah, pfft, like three-fourths of my first bloods are in that manner it's so good. That spot is so good. Like, like yes. I'm just waiting. The other, the other alternative is when they push you and you're on that catwalk and you ward that brush, because they go into that narrow area. Like vice versa, you can also pull that same trick if you have the coverage. It all depends on who has the wards down, honestly. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, like it's so dangerous to put yourself into that position because, like, when you're in a position of narrowness for a second or anything around that amount of time. Any mid lane main like Frost or myself sees this as an opportunity to damage you. We may not kill you, and that may not be our intent. Our intent is to get you the fuck out of lane so we can farm freely and not have to worry about jungler. Like, in fact, oftentimes I'll just, you know, do exactly what Frost said and not kill them. Maybe not blow Ignite, not blow Flash, and just lay down some early damage because that gives me so much control over the lane from then, like, then on. And now I just have free control. Like, I get to just keep it wherever I want, and I get to make the calls about what's happening. Mm -hmm. So, you know, aggressive and proper use of these skill shots, too, can... I mean, we talked about it in the early game when we talked about early game several months ago, but it, it's, it's really important. When you're, like, good at the game and skill shots become natural to you, it opens your opportunities up immensely. It allows you it's for... pretty damn satisfying, too. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. Mm -hmm. It allows you for more variations of play, and I think a lot of players don't appreciate that with specifically skill shots because they're so versatile and, and uh, abundant. Yeah, and I, I just want to harp on that one point here. You know, we are the Four Wards podcast, like, one of the easiest ways to catch people with skill shots is when they don't know that you're already in position uh, mm -hmm. to just hit them with skill shots. So use those pink wards. Like, not just on the fountain, like flanks. I mentioned earlier. <laughs> Dog of war, baby. Use them flanks, you know. Just, you know, sit on the other side of that jungle wall. Sit on, you know, sit in that bush and, you know, sit in the river and, you know, throw them skill shots out and watch what happens, you know, when someone gets hit by a blind skill shot. Yeah. I mean, and that's kind of like the, that's like the best part is because you're, not only are you taking advantage of, like, the human error aspect of people, but it, like it's so satisfying because they just get like completely caught. They have no idea what happened. Yeah. It's like what the fuck? Oh my <laughs> god! Are you shitting me? Like, and and it all happens in like the smallest sliver of a second. I mean, obviously, I'm thinking about Lux, but like, it's so damn quick. Step one: two people walk in. Let's try and contest their dragon. Step two. They're light binding. Step, Step three, three question mark, two question champions mark, question dead. Mark. Step four, profit. <laughs> <laughs> Something yep. happened uh, in that. Step three, people didn't see because they didn't ward, and three things died. Two two enemies and a dragon. <laughs> Every time. I don't know why people call it the pixel brush. I 
I have always known it as the death brush for exactly I, that reason. I, I you know, yeah. I'll probably get flack for saying this, but I've always called it the rape brush. Like, it's always been that to me. And something about that brush just fuels doom. Like, in it, you won't always die. Yes, You'll it just does. get fucked. <laughs> you you just get fucked. That. You, you just get say fucked. that with your hair. You just get, you just get fucked. Like, every time, yeah. that brush is just, it's the, it's the fuck you brush. I love it. You know, I think you're right, Asterician. I think there's still quite a bit more we could cover, and I, yeah, I just I think we're not going to be able to do it justice there's, with the rest of this episode. I want, there's so much that we could talk about. Each, and like, skill shots, just each individual yeah. skill shot is like a unique skill shot, but like, in general, the differences between something like even similar skill shots, like Lux Binding and Morgana Binding, like, they are very similar, but also Hard. very different when you just look at what they do and, and what they do for the character like i went up against a morgana lux yesterday <laughs> but, like, oh. but honestly i mean like please nice if you want while you were stunned if you want to carry on the discussion um you know please hit us up on our reddit or our twitter um or email us and we'll be glad to elaborate or uh touch on other points and uh maybe mm -hmm. bring them up on another episode too i'll fight yeah, you. I mean, if, you got a, like, specific, if you got a specific question about a skill shot that we mentioned today or one that we didn't cover that you want to hear more about please just write us in we'll be sure to answer it I, if not through email on air I, and yeah, I, yeah this so was many... definitely a sweeping overview yeah. of you know skill shots i really so. do want somebody to challenge me on luck singularity because i am curious to see if somebody can come up with a legitimate <laughs> argument no i am because i mean I, I i am the type of person that i could be convinced if another skill would be better and this is not just a bias this is the reason i love luck singularity is i personally think the best spell in the game and i love that character for that specific reason so if you can challenge me on that, then I am more than willing to hear it. I, I, I want to. I can't challenge strong. you on your opinion. You can't. Your That's opinion. The, the, well, no, you can. You can challenge me on it's, my opinion. Debate me on the facts. I honestly think that she is that ability is the best because of what it does, and I don't. I, I really do. If someone can come up with a different ability, that is better. Abilities are really apples and oranges, and I mean that in the, you know, mm -hmm. best metaphorical right. way possible. I don't know, but. I think it does. If, so if you much. feel like you want to talk to Asderician about this and have Do him it. prove you he's right, or just vice through versa. sheer force of will, if you want to prove me wrong, let him let him know. But I think that's going to be uh, it for us this week here on the Four Words Podcast. Thanks everyone for joining us here. We'll be back uh, next week to talk more leagues. So we'll see you then. Bye bye. Bye bye.